Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. All right, so check out the results from various studies. Each bar represents a study on the effect of a certain something on myostatin, right? So each bar represents a reduction in myostatin from the lowest to the highest, right? You can tell that the average is around 40%, as low as 20%, as high as, you know, 75, 80%, right? And look how effective all of these methods are at reducing myostatin. Now, guess, guess what method or supplement or whatever it is uh, that resulted in this huge decrease in myostatin, right? Guess what the myostatin blockers in these respective studies were. Anyway, this is another episode of Myostatin Monday. I decided to bring the series back. Now, I'm pretty sure everyone is already familiar with myostatin. You guys already know how obsessed I am with that molecule. There are three molecules that I'm obsessed with that I've spent over a decade researching. And it's obviously testosterone, dopamine, and myostatin. So those three are my babies. And I love keeping up with the research on myostatin. Again, you guys know how hypertrophy is my obsession. This is my handmade. Uh, don't even try to make sense out of this. You know, this is uh, something I created on PowerPoint. Pretty much every, I mapped out every single pathway of hypertrophy. Every single pathway you could think about from the androgen receptor, estrogen receptor, IGF-1 pathway, whatever. I've seen my statins here. Even like this throwing this up here. So as you can tell, I'm very obsessed with this shit. And I understand this pathway like the back of my fucking hand. And in case you were wondering, out of all of these different pathways, the most anabolic one is the myostatin pathway, right? Again, that includes the active N2B receptor, active NA, phylostatin, SMAD, you name it. It is the most anabolic pathway, muscle building pathway in the human body. It's even more anabolic than the testosterone uh, and androgen receptor pathway, believe it or not. People actually think that the androgen receptor pathway or pretty much, you know, steroids uh, are more anabolic than the myostatin pathway, which is not the case. In fact, if you had to, to choose between being born with a myostatin efficiency or being born with uh, overexpressing the androgen receptor, you definitely want to pick the myostatin efficiency pathway. You'd be a lot bigger. In fact, every single animal or human that has a myostatin deficiency from birth are way bigger than it would have been if they were on steroids. Keep in mind, you know, all these uh, examples here they have normal levels of testosterone in the bodies. So they're able to get this jacked without excess amounts of testosterone, which goes to show how powerful the myostatin pathway is. And again, it's this pathway here. Now, the reason why it's so anabolic is simple. One, myostatin stops protein synthesis. So obviously, blocking myostatin is going to increase protein synthesis. Myostatin increases protein breakdown. So it does many things at once. Not only decreases protein synthesis, but it also increases protein breakdown. So by stopping myostatin, you're actually getting double the effect on hypertrophy. Third thing it does is obviously stop satellite cell activation. So go buy a nucleus overload, go buy satellite cell proliferation, and all that good shit. And on top of that, myostatin is responsible for insulin resistance. So if you're obese or if you uh, borderline have type 2 diabetes, my statin is to blame. So by stopping this protein, by stopping this molecule and this pathway, you are actually hitting four birds with one stone. That's why animals or humans who lack the my statin protein are so jacked. It's a quadruple effect. And there are even more pathways that I could cover in future videos. And that's also why people who have high my statin levels lose muscle extremely fast. For example, whenever you put your legs in a cast or whenever you immobilize, the reason why your legs shrink is because your levels of myostatin in your leg increase. HIV patients and people who are wasting away, the main reason why they lose so much muscle is because their myostatin levels go up. Astronauts, right? The reason why not astronauts have to actually train in space is because the moment they go in space where there's no gravity, no tension, no volume on the muscle, myostatin levels go up and they lose a ton of muscle mass so as you can see the myostatin pathway is no joke it is by far the most important pathway even with anabolic steroids when bodybuilders get on anabolic steroids and put on muscle yes in some cases myostatin goes up so obviously keep up with the huge increase in muscle mass but phylostatin goes up even more which is the reason why they have this huge increase in uh in muscle mass right most people don't know that most of testosterone's anabolic effects are mainly mediated uh by the phylostatin pathway Black phylostatin and testosterone pretty much loses a ton of its potency. But anyway, that's a whole different topic for a whole different video. Now, did you guess what the mystery method was that lowered myostatin so drastically in all these studies? Boom. Resistance training, guys. The number one myostatin blocker in the world, based on the research we have so far. 
the number one natural myostatin blocker is training. Resistance training can lower myostatin up to 70%, usually about 40% on average. That is a bigger reduction than you get from anything else that's out there in the market, right? You guys know on this channel, I like to stick with the basics, right? Stop trying to spend your money on all these different supplements, that promise you things that the basics take care of. You know, that's why I emphasize basic things like drinking water, sleeping, getting enough sunlight and vitamin D, eating your spinach and quinoa, right? Save your money, especially when natural means are so much more effective. Everyone is out there asking me, Megan, what do you think of this? Uh, my sand blocker and this father said, da, da, da. when you could just fucking train, right? Nothing that we know of so far, naturally that is, reduces my sand more than training. In fact, the reason why you build muscle from lifting weights in the first place is because every exercise session, every workout session that you do lowers myosatin. And several studies have shown not only the correlation, but the causation. For example, this study here shows you the correlation is negative 82. So that means almost 70% of the gains you make from lifting are due to your ability to lower myosatin from each lifting session. Think about that for a second. That's why people who are not good at lowering my side from training don't put on gains. For example, old women. It's very hard for old women to put on muscle because when old women train, it is very hard for them to lower my side as opposed to old men or young men and young women. The bigger the drop in my side from your lifting sessions, the bigger the hypertrophy over time. Right? This is a bigger correlation than the contribution of testosterone to training. Let that sink in for a moment. Reducing my side from training is way more important than even increasing uh, natural testosterone from your training sessions. Now, the reason why you don't look like this after years of training is simply because they had no myostatin from birth, right? The, the Belgian blue, these myostatin dogs, whatever. These guys had no myostatin from birth. So not only they had hyperplasia, they have a lot more muscle fibers, but they were under the influence of uh, not having myostatin for years. The perfect example is these mice here. For example, this one is lacking the active N2B receptor, which is where myostatin binds. And this one, the biggest one, and I'm going to make a whole separate video on that, is actually expressing phylocytin. So meaning not only is blocking myostatin, but it's also blocking active N8, which also activates the active N2B receptor. But anyway, so yeah, so that's the reason why you don't look like this just from training, simply because these guys were under the influence of uh, uh, not having myostatin for a lot longer. The second reason is simply because most people forget that after a lifting session, myostatin drops for a very short amount of time. I've mentioned that in past videos, right? At eight hours post-training is when you have your biggest drop in myostatin, and then it goes right back to baseline around the 24, 30-hour mark, which again brings us back to frequent training, nucleus overload, full-body workouts. Notice how eventually everything boils back down to simply weekly volume, keeping myostatin at bay. Notice how before training, it was elevated. After training, huge drop and then back to baseline so you have to keep the cycle going keep training again obviously assuming you fully recovered to keep myostatin away all right so that's it guys the number one myostatin blocker in the world is simply lifting fucking weights now of course in the future i'm going to make more videos on the different uh myostatin blockers out there but for now just focus on the basics guys save your money all right, guys, don't forget to like or share the video, subscribe and hit the bell, and buy my HSP Nucleus of a Low Training Program. It's the ultimate program for maximum muscle growth. It includes full body workout splits, bro splits, push pull, home workouts, you name it. Also comes with a complete guide for macros, nutrition, fat loss, muscle growth, hormones, including a meal plan. It's pretty much all my 16 years of experience condensed into one fucking book. You're also going to get free copies of any future edition. So visit team3dalpha.com and you can use the 40% off coupon code Nicholas Overlord. Or you could just buy the shit at full price. All right, guys, I'm out of here.